Why do car stereos sound better than home hi-fi? This question comes to us from Ron in Burlington, Vermont. Hey Paul, some of the most enjoyable sound I've ever heard recently is in high-end car stereo. Uh, no kidding. Could you explain this phenomena? And what would it take to produce the effect in home stereo? In the car, I get impact, nuance, and great sense of pace. P.S. My first pair of real speakers I ever purchased were the Infinity Monitors back in the 1970s that had transmission line enclosures and the ice cream cone tweeter on top. Well, that <laughs> well thanks, Ron. That ice cream cone tweeter uh, is better known as a Walsh tweeter, and it was a pretty cool tweeter. Infinity used it very, very early on, and it wasn't something that we... Um, spent a lot of time on and I never actually heard a Walsh tweeter but I certainly knew of it and it was uh, pretty famous I know Arnie used it for a year or two and I think they fell out of favor with uh, the guys at, uh, at, at Ohm that made those Walsh tweeters in any case I don't remember that Infinity ever used transmission line bass might have been but um, I don't think they ever did I know his buddy Bud Freed Bud Freed was big. That was that was the uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the Freed monitors or something. Uh, Bud was big into transmission line bass, and we've talked about transmission line bass before, where the the back of the woofer goes through a labyrinth of internal baffles that that route the sound around, and it's measured such that when the sound finally comes out past these baffles to the front of the speaker, it's in phase with the front of the speaker and, and, and it actually doesn't detract from, from it and adds to it. And, and it has some other characteristics too. But anyway, we're off on course. So the question is, why does music in the car sound good? So here... The movie song. So there's Dire Straits, and I'm in my car, which is a Tesla, and this is one of the best sound systems I have ever heard in a car. Now, I'm sure there's probably better systems and all that, but it's, doggone it, it's one of the best systems I've, I've ever heard in a car. So I'm going to answer the question, but let me just first suggest that while the sound systems in our car can often be the best sound systems we have, they certainly don't compare with a good high-end audio two-channel system in our rooms. And if yours in the car is better, that may be a function of the speakers you have, the setup you have, or the electronics you have at home. But that said, it can sound awfully good and very intimate. So basically, if you look at a well-designed system within a car, you have a couple of things going for you. You have a confined space where you know exactly the dimensions of that space. And you have the ability to add DSP, like you might on a home theater. So digital signal processing uh, is the ability of, call it a computer if you will, but it's a, a, a processing chip to make the sound pretty much any way you want within this confined space. And of course, many systems today, particularly home theater systems, use digital signal processing. And that's fairly accepted in two-channel audio. There's a few companies that do it. Walter Liederman's company, uh, gosh, I never remember, Emerald, Emerald Physics. He has a, uh, I think they do some DSP on their open baffle speakers, and there are a few people doing DSP, but DSP in a room that, on a pair of stereo speakers, is quite different, especially when you get to higher frequencies, than it is in a confined space where we know where people sit, we know how big the space is. It's a lot different in here and can be engineered a lot better in here and a lot easier than you might be able to do inside of your, your home. So I think that's probably the biggest reason why modern stereo systems within a car 
are so darn good is that they can really tailor that system to fit the environment, your ears, and to know where you are in the car. So I think that's the long and short answer of it. When we're making our new speakers, which are coming along nicely, and I'm excited because um, I think on the 10th of April, perhaps? I, I, I'm, I'm recording this in March, and I don't know when you're going to see this. I record these, as you know, in advance, because I, I can just dedicate a Saturday to, to doing it, <laughs> so we can be together, right? But um, we'll be at Expona in Chicago, and, and come hell or high water, uh, I'm going to have a pair of the AN3s, our, our Arnie Newdell-inspired uh, speakers, and those speakers uh, from 500 hertz, 600 hertz or so, down to 20 hertz, will all be self-amplified, servo-controlled, and DSP, because at those low frequencies, we, we, we can measure the room very easily. We can take general readings so that anywhere you are in the room, that speaker is going to work pretty well uh, at those lower frequencies. Now, when we get down to, or we get up to higher frequencies, then it's a lot tougher because I don't know where you're sitting. I don't know where your head is, how many people are there, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so yeah, DSP is cool at lower frequencies or in a confined space like a car. Anyway, Ron, thank you for the question. It was great. And um, I think it's lunchtime. I'm going to put this dog in, in reverse. And we're going to head out of here. See you later. Bye.